Good morning everyone, it's Russ from Pathless Pedaled and uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually out here in Vermont, but have you ever ridden a rail trail and wish that they would make some minor tweaks to make it better for you as a cyclist? Well in this video that's what we're going to do. This is a little bit of a behind the scenes look. I'm going to be working with a planning group out here called SE Group and we're going to be conducting uh, some public engagement meetings, a trail audit, to really engage with the community and see how a rail trail, in this case, the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, can be improved. So let's meet the rest of the team. There's Drew. All right, internet, this is Drew. Hello, welcome to Vermont. So you're the project manager, cattle herder of, of uh, this project? I am, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have the, the distinct pleasure of uh, leading the charge on the rail trail roundup this weekend. So it's gonna be really fun to uh, talk to local residents and businesses about the trail and how we can better promote it and market it to all of you fine people out there. So let's get to uh, the start of the rail trail. <laughs> First challenge is to get uh, my bike and all the and all the stuff to the start of the rail trail. And it fits! Yes. This case is amazing. <laughs> About the trail so far? You know it's about uh, 26.2 miles long, uh, goes through about 12 places, named named places if not all full towns. Um, that it has tons of great views along the way, a number of really nice bridges where it crosses the Missisquoi River, uh, a couple of falls, hopefully we'll see some birds and we'll find out a little bit more <laughs> as we go. What's the whole purpose of this project that we're working on? We're doing uh, marketing, branding, and wayfinding for the trail. And so we're trying to uh, create a presence for the trail in the local community so people have a sense of pride and kind of are using it locally, but also so we can promote it. So other people will come uh, visit the towns along the trail and, and go for a ride. So that's one of the things that we've talked about a lot is uh, a lot of these rail trails, great attractions, but not very good integration with local communities. So part of this project is to see how you can pull people from the trail to the businesses, get the businesses excited about the rail trail itself. That's absolutely right. So we just finished up the first kind of community meeting. Uh, I think we're gonna gather and ride uh, the trail, do the trail audit, I'm gonna take some video, but first I have to assemble my bike, just in the parking lot, so hopefully we can get it together fairly quickly. All right, so I've uh, successfully assembled the bike rather hurriedly in the parking lot. Hopefully it's all put together okay. Feels like a bike. Now let's check out this rail trail. What's your favorite thing about this rail trail? <laughs> the fact that I can go on it and ride around and feel safe from traffic and it's very beautiful and I feel very fortunate that we have it. Right. That's why I'm on the council. As a landscape architect, like what do you, how do you view the trail? Like what are you looking for? Where do you see improvements? Um, so today I'm really looking at like wayfinding signage, what, what's existing, what we could possibly do later, um, condition of the trail, all the parking lots. Um, road crossings, how that's integrated, like, um, is there enough signage to let cars know that there's a trail there? So one thing that's cool about this trail is the surface kind of changes. Now it's a little bit more like double track and it goes through lots of uh, wooded sections so you're not super exposed in the sun the whole time. And uh, it's fairly, it's it's pretty idyllic if you haven't been to this part of the country. Yeah. So what are, what are we seeing? Um, the, all the lines, they're maple sugaring lines for uh, capping trees, maple trees for maple syrup. Not power lines, those are maple syrup yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah. See, I think this is where it would be cool for some interpretation for out-of-towners, you know? Yeah. So I saw those, I was like, well, that's a funny place to put a cable line. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I wonder if the fishing is good along the Mrs. Point. We have yeah. Awesome to get to do. 
Are, are you familiar with the hashtag uh, bike fishing? No, I'm not. If you if you go on Instagram and type in a uh, hashtag bike fishing, uh -huh. there's a sub niche of people that bring fly rods on bike. Oh, awesome! <laughs> I have no idea who started it. <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> so this is Greta. Hi. And uh, you're working on this trail. What's tell, tell us a little bit about the project. Yeah, so I'm at the Conway School of Landscape Design. It's a graduate program. And myself and my partner Asia are working on doing some trailhead redesigns uh, for trailheads along the MBRT. Like what all goes into trailhead design? So we look at things like drainage patterns and zoning and um, sun and shade and all that kind of thing. And we host two community meetings where we talk to people in the area and find out what they need and what they want. Who knew so much went into trailhead? <laughs> <laughs> so Drew. Yeah. We just had a meeting at uh, the diner. Uh, break it down, like what, what happened? What'd you hear? Well, we heard some pretty exciting things about uh, Canadian tourism happening from the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, that being a big draw, uh, the trail itself being something that they're coming down for. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really exciting. But we're kind of hoping to see how we can make get them to extend their stay a little bit longer and do overnight potentially, um, or ride more of the trail or do some loops. Um, and trying to kind of uh, maybe have some events that promote the trail as well. So I think we got super lucky with the weather because it's just about perfect today. I think it's like 70s and sun and uh, there's all this great shade under the canopy. So cool uh, river crossing. Pretty big. Uh, we're having lunch and Drew's leading a discussion on what else they're going to do with the trail uh, so people are giving their feedback and I think the next thing from here is uh, we're going to ride six more miles into the town of Edensburg where there's going to be another public engagement meeting. The trail is a lot more impressive than I thought it would be. The views of the river are awesome. Bonus that there's trout inside. So if you haven't been, you should definitely check it out. Six miles to Edensburg Falls where we'll be staying overnight and holding another evening event. Uh, getting a little bit more input from uh, the community. Any insights so far? Um, I've been looking at all these mile markers and uh, thinking of how we can use like the logo or something on those, trying to create a little bit more identity on the trail. And we need more signage to tell you where things are. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the businesses? Where's food? Where's ice cream? It's, it's pretty, but you don't, really don't have a sense of uh, location or uh, you know what what else is around you. So a little wayfinding, St. Albans is where we started, Innsburg is where we're going, and Richford's the end of the trail. This trail passes through uh, a lot of ag land, uh, a bunch of places where they're drawing maple syrup, some dairy farms, uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty verdant part of uh, Vermont. So I was riding along and I discovered uh, that we've got a medieval French scholar with us. <laughs> and we were discussing how the word pannier could have been, would have been pronounced, uh, potentially pronounced back then. And you were saying, how? Pannier. They, they would have rolled the R's. They rolled the R's. Yeah. So there, to even complicate the mystery of how to pronounce pannier correctly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the digs for the night. Place called 1906 House. There's gonna be evening kind of public engagement meeting, and uh, it's gonna be in this barn, which is cool. Barns are cool. So it's morning of day two. I didn't get to film last night because I was super tired, but we had a great evening kind of reception, uh, more community engagement. How do you think it went? I think it went really well. Um, we got a lot of good input at the meeting. Uh, there was great food. There was uh, nice beverages on offer. And, and it was so in the barn. <laughs> yeah, the barn was such a cool space. It had really amazing lights in there and the design of it was really nice. What's on the docket for today? 
So today we're gonna finish out the rest of the trail. We're gonna ride here in Innisburg Falls down to Richford. Uh, we're gonna meet right at a park that overlooks the Missisquoi River. We're gonna engage with people there in Richford, have a lunch. We're loving the weather that we got this weekend <laughs> and we're gonna just be soaking up the sunshine today. Yeah. So one cool thing is uh, this trail runs right through the town of Innisburg. So there's an Ace Hardware here. Old uh, train depot and uh, the folks that we're going to be riding with today. Yeah. I'm going to look inside the, b the big orange uh, car here. Caboose. Caboose. The caboose. So they've got a free bike and rail trail guides. Oh, sweet. Wow. That's pretty cool. Hello. It's a big wrench. Might fit my headset. So I'm going to ask a dumb question. What's, what's the function of a caboose? Brain center. That's where the brains are. The, the control conduct is control. It feels like this Starship Enterprise yeah. up here. <laughs> yeah, this command center. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So this is a pre pre internet. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, you, you need good aim. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. A uh, historical caboose. You can take a self guided tour. They've got. Uh, rail guides or trail guides inside. All right, so we're rolling again out of Innsburg. And uh, during the meeting last night, I asked a bunch of people what kind of tied the area together. And apparently this part of Vermont is uh, still a part where there's a lot of uh, working farms. So not hobby farms, but real serious production. Uh, a lot of dairy. So as we're riding, uh, you can see a big lump in the distance. And uh, you said that's Jay Peak? Jay Peak, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a ski area there. Uh, and it also is kind of a, one of those iconic features of the trail and of northern Vermont. It has some of the best snow in the northeast uh, in terms of skiing. Uh, and then there's some really great road rides around there as well, actually. What's your favorite thing about the trail? You know, it's easier to bike with someone on a trail and visit. Where right. if you're road biking, you need to pay attention to the traffic. So it's nice that we have, we have the choice of uh, the rail trail. All right, so uh, we are at the terminus of the trail. We're pulling into the town of Richford. Uh, there's going to be a small little lunch gathering, a little bit more public engagement. Howdy! Uh, and then, and I think we'll do kind of a little synthesis of what we've seen, maybe talk a little bit about uh, our different perspectives, uh, about how to help improve this rail track. spent the last couple of days on the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail. Just thought we'd kind of give you guys a breakdown of our individual kind of observation. So I've been looking at a lot of the rail trail from the signage, wayfinding perspective, opportunities for branding, at least along the trail. And it seems like there's a lot, lot of opportunities for things where it's definitely lacking connections to towns and villages and, you know, giving that direction like there's a restaurant a half mile this way or, you know, the bed and breakfast is over here. Like it definitely needs some more signage and information to make that a little bit more inviting for folks that especially are coming to travel here that have never been from the area, don't know what's around. <laughs> yeah, and that's not really unique to this rail trail. Yeah. I mean, lots of rail trails suffer from this. It's almost like having a freeway and no exits. Yes. You know, yeah. no, no like town signs and no like, you know, this is where you get your gas, your food or something. Yeah. You know, it makes sense to do something similar for the rail trail. Mm -hmm. I mean, from today, just seeing Jay Peak with the Missisquoi River right next to us and Jay Peak kind of right over the trail was just, it was a really beautiful moment. Um, just the scenery, the sun today was incredible. And so kind of like soaking in that real 
the scenic beauty of this trail, you know, that I had kind of known about, but that view in particular was just really incredible. Um, and I was really struck by the conversations we had with the select board members in Richford, um, uh, when we talked with the state representative from this area, and they're really interested in how they can use use the assets that they have, the, the trails, the river, the views, and really leverage that for, for everyone. And so they're, they're doubling down on making that connection from Richford to the Canadian border, and really kind of the connectivity value of this trail um, to kind of connect to the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail and to the Route Verit in Canada, I think it's just really incredible. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of get uh, uh, close to 2,000 miles of cycling uh, mm -hmm. connected up there, which I think is pretty powerful. Uh, I looked at the, the trail through my eyes as a, as a marketer or someone that creates videos. And um, the problem I was going through was like, what is like the narrative of the trail? You know, what's the, the emotional hook? What's the draw? For me, like I was actually surprised at how pretty the trail was. Good. You know? <laughs> and, you know, I just imagine you know, it being perfectly flat and hot and exposed, but there's actually you know, some undulation in the terrain. I love that it was gravel. It added kind of a little bit of an adventurous element to it. And also there's lots of like cool spots where there's a river, or there's a beaver pond, or there's like some kind of canopy of trees. This trail really highlights some of those great things about Vermont. Um, just kind of the, the Green Mountains, the, those views and things are a lot of things that make Vermont special. Um, and so I'm glad, I'm glad we get to show you some real Vermont out here <laughs> yeah. in the next couple of days. Well, we're going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes of what it looks like to do a trail audit, uh, look at it from the perspective of a landscape architect someone that, that deals with uh, community engagement and as you know, you know what we do. Uh, so if you guys <laughs> dig it, subscribe, leave comments in, uh, below, and as always, keep the supple side down.